hi ladies and gentlemen welcome back to my channel today we're gonna finish the tutorial on transformers now we're gonna do a few more things um so let's just review what we had last time we had a transformer and um, on the primary side we have 12 volts on the secondary side we have 120 volts and we established then that this transformer is a step up transformer what happens here is you supply 12 volts through the transformer and on the secondary the voltage increases by 10 which means the step up factor is 10 remember primary turns ratio to the secondary turns will determine the step up factor or step down factor so in this case you have one turn in the primary you have um, 10 turns in the secondary so the voltage will increase in that proportion so also the current the current in the primary is 12 volt, 12 amps, and the current in the secondary is 10 times less, which is 1.2. And this is because I told you last time the power is conserved. You can see if you confirm. So we're gonna try again. Let's just start afresh. If you will, you can go to this website multisim.com and sign up and create your own circuit. It's free to sign up, and you can use um some of their free uh, free simulations so let's just take it the transformer here well, this is one is to one there's a center type transformer so let's just um, there's also one that is one primary two secondary in this case we're just going to use one primary one secondary um, the things we need obviously you know this by now we need a voltage source we're going to use a uh, DC for now just to demonstrate the uh, this theory but we're gonna use AC voltage ultimately at the end remember I told you guys last time um, transformers allow AC currents to go through but they block DC currents so why do I use DC because this is gonna give you almost like a static condition just does the math and tells you uh, what is in and what is on the out um, what we're gonna do later Sorry, we're gonna take a load first. Let's see oh, this kind of resistor impedance block. Let's take an impedance block, right? Why not? Um, uh, let's try the other one. Um, uh, voltage control resistor. Now we're good with impedance block. So flip this guy around and connect. Most of yours. Regular circuit we have um, some impedance, not just pure resistances, but you're gonna have complex impedances. So I think this is fair enough. We use um, this one here again. We're trying to measure the input and the output, right? So don't forget to put your ground. The reason being that our meter has a ground reference. All right. I think that's all we need. Now let's run it down. Okay, so you can see um, 12 volts right here, 1.2 volts on the output, 120 micro amps on the input, and 1.2 milliamps on the output. What does it tell you about the the transformer? So it's not really the one is to one that we thought it was right so let's see do you still think the transformer is a one is to one after what we just saw no i don't think so i think this transformer is um 10 is to one so we're going to look at the characteristics of the transformer shortly just let's reconnect this ground as you connect the ground and see right, always put your ground because the voltage meter has a ground reference now let's check the characteristics of this transformer because what we saw doesn't agree what we thought we think so primary turns is 10 and secondary turns is 1 okay so we just proved it right is 10 is to 1 now we want to make the secondary higher uh, to reverse the condition so let's just make the secondary 
100. So now the secondary is 10 times more. And what that means then is that the secondary voltage will also be 10 times more than the primary. So you have 12 volts here. We're going to predict 120 volts over there. Let's run the simulation one more time. All right. So you can see what I mean. But then the current is is 10 times less. Right? Just makes sense. Power is conserved. Whatever you put in, whatever power you put in, I squared R component of your input is also going to be your I squared R component of your output. And this Z is equal to A plus uh, JB will be your impedance. Most practical loads we have the real com real, real parts and the complex parts all right so we, we i think we're done here um we're just gonna try to use ac voltage as the source this gives us a math of what it looks like but if you look at a graph what does the graph of what you just done look like just looks like a straight line straight line 12 volts input and then the output will be somewhere way above here so we won't see that so let's um go back to the schematics and make a change how about if we change the ratio um, so that we can okay we can do the change while it's running so let's make this 12 is to is to um, 6 or oh, 6 is to 12 what uh, let's make it 12 is to 6 yeah and so we can see it on the graph otherwise we're going to adjust the graph um, so without adjusting the graph let's see if we can see both voltages yep so when it's at six and when it's way down here 1.2 volts and when it's at uh, 12 volts 12 volts 1.2 volts okay so that's the output so this is 12 volts and this is 1.2 volts. The secondary is 1.2 volts. Let's play the screen and see both. The secondary is 1.2 way down here and the primary is 12 volts. We need the adjustment so we can see the graph. Otherwise, we have to adjust the graph. All right, but this is fine. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is to try um, using an AC voltage source, okay? Because that's the practical application um, for transformers is that your voltage source is AC, not DC. So let's put another voltage source. AC source. Um, what, what do I have here? So AC current source, not an AC voltage source. All right. So connect it as before. Now we're gonna run the simulation one more time. All right, so that's it. And then we're gonna. So the, the frequency is so high, so why don't we adjust the frequency and the voltage? We adjust the frequency and the voltage. Right. So let's adjust the voltage. Um, one volt. Let's make it ten volts. And how about the frequency? Let's make it a little bit lower this is in kilohertz let me make it um one percent no let's make it 10 about 50 let's make it 50 this will be more um 50 to 60 is fine because that is more like what we see in the homes all right now let's look at the graph you can see the values fluctuate a lot so it's really hard to tell what the value is so if you go to the graph, you're gonna see similar thing, right? So you're gonna see the voltage is going, but you can look at the the amplitude. So the amplitude at 10 and the the other amplitude at around um, the one point something. Yeah, so let's see if we can get a single. Yeah. So right here you have one at around 10 volts. And the other one, the maximum amplitude is around one volt. Right. So this is a plot. So this is the, the reality. What is gonna what's, what's the graph is gonna look like? Um, let's see. Okay, let's make it automatic, not single. Okay. 
go back to the schematics and the graph we still frozen here normal okay normal all right so one more thing we're gonna do here with this is we're gonna try to rectify the output voltage and see what we get from there right so stop and start So we're going to rectify the, this voltage, let's go to the schematics, and what do we learn about transformers? Transformers um, are voltage trans translators, if you will, they take input voltage and give you the same, um, if it's the same ton tons ratio, you get the same voltage and, and current and the output, but if there is any step up or step down function on the voltage, the reverse will be the will be the case on the current so when you have um, step up voltage you have step down current when you have step down voltage you have step up current so we are using an ac uh, voltage source here and then we've seen the signal is, is uh, alternating on the output now we can rectify the output signal and we can do voltage doubler voltage quadruple and so on and so forth let's look, look at, let's look at the parameters of this transformer stop Input is 10, output is 1. So it's going to be a step down transformer. The, the voltage will be stepped down, but the current will be stepped up by 10. Now let's rectify the voltage, the output voltage, and see what it, what it looks like. Okay. So we're going to remove this connection. And between that, we're going to insert voltage uh, rectifier. Um, I don't think there's a voltage rectifier block here let's check one more time general purpose uh, okay we don't see the voltage rectifier block but it's not a, it's not a problem we're gonna um, um, make copies of this but let's flip, flip it around first and make copies so we can create a voltage rectifier so there's full wave and there's half wave. So let's do half wave first. Half wave requires just one re one in on uh, diode. Okay, I'm gonna use this one for that. Right. We're gonna keep these ones here. We're not gonna use them now. These other ones. We're gonna use them later. Right. Let's plug you in here for this we need an inductive e capacitor all right remember we discussed all these components now let's see them in action working together and we just i'm gonna bring back this guy here when you're rectifying the voltage the voltage source make sure that the vo the voltage of your trans of your capacitor is at least four over three multiplied by the value of your output voltage so let's take this out we're gonna put it back later So 4 over 3 is like 1.33, so use 1.333 to multiply your output voltage, that will be the voltage of your capacitor, that's the rule of thumb, okay. So we have the circuit set up the way we want it, now let's connect this up, make a copy and put another one here because we want to see how the waveform looks over there. Let's make a copy of this because we need one right here, since we have some voltage um, meters on the output we also need a ground reference now let's run this we know we have it's going to complain about the other components but we're going to ignore them right now it's, it's okay they are not connected so let's look at the graph and see what it looks like oh this looks ugly but uh, you can see what voltage is this? Dotted PR3. Let's see what is PR3. P 
PL3 is the voltage going to the load. So it's rectified voltage this time around. Over here is still AC, but v, v R, PR3 is a rectified voltage, but there's a lot of ripples on it. So we need to change the value of this capacitor. So let's do a split screen and see what happens as we change the value of the capacitor, shall we? Alright, let's change the value of the capacitor. And Okay, so let's lower it a little bit. Anyway. I'm gonna do a single now to capture it and see. Okay, we can't capture it from here. Alright, let's see. Um, why don't we remove all the other meters and see because we still have two showing us um, Let's make sure we have a step down transformer here um, We still have step down transformer So let's um, stop this And Remove these other meters Then we're just gonna have one meter here. The previous PR3, still PR3 right now. But you can see the okay, let's let it go. So half of rectifier, what it does, it only rectifies one half of the voltage. So we are actually losing half of the voltage. You can see it goes. Let's see if we can freeze it to see what's going on there. Um, let's go and graph, full graph, and see if we can freeze it. Okay, freeze. On single. All right, you can see the, the, the falling age and then the rising age on the other side. Um, let's make it full wave so we can understand this properly. Sometimes you see the rising edge because it has to charge up the capacitor and then discharge. So we're losing half of the voltage. Now we're gonna go do full wave rectifier. I wanna make sure this video doesn't um, take that long. So we have 18 minutes already recorded. So let's do full wave rectifier quickly so to have a full wave rectifier we need two two diodes and we're going to take each side of the of the transformer and connect it to, to this diode to these diodes so let's take uh, sorry um, we need to move this down here and then the other one right on the doesn't have to be very pretty, so let's connect. Okay. And connect this transformer somewhere in between both of them. And then take the top, the positive side, to the load, and then take the negative side to the ground. Alright, and we're gonna check the voltage. Okay. Alright, so something is missing, right? Um, full wave bridge, I need this component for. And then I need this one also. So this is the full wave bridge configuration. You have the half, the, the, the full, the half wave, and then you have the full wave. And there's also full wave two, two, in di two diodes. But in this case, you're gonna use two capacitors. So in this case, we're gonna just use one capacitor. And let's run this.
All right. So let's see the graph. So the voltage is very low. Um, step down voltage. Let's stop it and go back to the schematic and change this. Make it one is to one so we can see what is happening. All right, let's see what's happening. Very graph. All right, so it's about eight volts on the output, so we're losing about 1.6 volts. And do you know why that is? Let's go back here. Each diode will drop. 0 0.7 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 volts in the forward direction so you have 10 volts over here one is one is 10 so you're going to lose 0 0.6 so this when it's positive going at the same time this is negative going so you're losing 0 0.6 this way and 0 0.6 that way or 0 0.7 this way 0 0.7 that way so 1.4 or 1.2 you're losing on each cycle when this is negative going you're going to lose 0 0.6 0 0.7 here and you're still gonna lose 0 0.6, 0 0.7 over there. So D2 and D3 will, will conduct um, in one cycle and D1 and D4 in the other cycle. So when it's positive going, D1 is conducting, also D4 is conducting in reverse direction. When this point is negative going, D2 is conducting and, and the D3 is also conducting in the forward direction. So you're losing some voltage. That's why at the output, you are getting 1.4 volts. You're losing 1.6, all right. So, so say uh, these values, the calculation actually shows that we're losing about 1.6, which, which means 0 0.8 on each diode. And that's the reason when we stepped it down and made it um, 1 volt, you were getting almost zero. Why? Because you're dropping everything in the rectification, right? So let's just do a quick uh, step up transformer, right? Why not? So to, to do this um, step up, we can or oh, voltage double out. Let's do voltage double out. We still have 10 volts here. Let's see what we're gonna see in the output when we do this voltage double out. And to do a voltage double out, the, the quickest one I did uh, when I built amplifiers is to use two diodes and two capacitors, right? So this piece then will go to the top here. And then this piece, we go to the middle of here. All right. So in this case, we're gonna get um voltage double function. So let's make sure we put the meter in the right place. Okay, this is. I think this should be fine. So let's run it. All right, so right here we have 10 volts and over there we have about 18.2 volts. Again, we are losing, um, the voltage double for this would have given us 20 volts, but we're losing about two volts. So we have doubled the voltage. As you can see that we almost doubled the voltage here, just by using this configuration, two diodes and two capacitors in this configuration, we almost doubled the voltage. Let's use, uh, let's change the value of this capacitor and make it normally we use things like 450 470 microfarad okay. 470 microfarad and let's do the same over here right. so and then the, the voltage of course make sure that the voltage it's at um, at least 1.33 the value of the input voltage. So this is what what you're seeing right here. When I say input voltage, I mean the voltage on the secondary side, right? Not necessarily the primary side. So we have shown this now. You can go ahead and and uh, do this if if you want. You can build out the circuit and see how it functions. Another thing we're gonna do here is to uh, let's just stop the simulation. Oh, look, sorry, let's look at the graph, right? Let's look at the graph and see 
the voltage is out of range right because the meter we have let's see um let's set the meter range the meter range a maximum voltage let's make it 20 24 volts let's see 24 volts yeah let's run it again uh, we, we adjust the range to see, to be able to see our voltage you can see some ripples right it's not fully uh direct current but the, the ripples is not that bad so um the value of your capacitor will determine the amount of ripples that you get you can see it's ripple should be straight but it's it's still fluctuating a little bit but consider that the value when it was zero to to ten then back to zero and then back to negative 10 so you can call this dc they are all on the positive side and just a few ripples we can increase this to a thousand microfarad let's say 2200 let's do 4700 4700 yeah how about that For, how about that the value will be more um, stable the, the higher the value 4700 microfarad you can see the ripples is less now the fluctuations are less so yeah the higher the value of your capacitor the, the lower the ripples it might not be very apparent here but if we go down let's go down why not let's make it 220 microfarads right 220 microfarads in for each you can see it's already running crazy 220 microfarads it's crazy right see the value it's fluctuating a lot so how about if you just make it one microfarad now that, that, that shouldn't happen see so the value it's, it's running all over the place it's like you you, you don't even have um, a filtering circuit at all because your your capacitor is supposed to filter out the ripples and it's it's fluctuating all over the place right so you you, you see the value of having a capacitor at the output so it takes time to charge it it takes a little time to charge the lower value capacitor and takes little time also to discharge it the higher the value the more time it takes to charge it any more time it takes to discharge it um so um the the, the 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 if the time it takes to charge and discharge is higher than the time is is, is higher than your, your frequency the time it takes to complete one cycle then your your filter your ripple will be less so the more the time it takes to discharge compared to the your, your frequency the, your ripple will, will be higher by that much so let's say it takes five seconds to to charge your capacitor but you have and it takes five seconds also to discharge it but your frequency you your the signal the voltage goes through one sec one cycle maybe like um 100 times in a second 100 hertz or maybe 50 hertz let's say 50 hertz or 60 hertz then the 60 hertz means 60 seconds in one second your, your capacitor is still trying to discharge when the loop when he has gone back to positive so it, it really take has time to go deep down right so it's about to, to go down then it's already charging again then it's about to go it's already charging again so it stays high but if the time it takes to charge your capacitor is almost as the same it takes to it takes to charge and discharge your capacitor is almost at the same as the frequency or even less then the function of the capacitor will not be noticed you see the, the the ripples a lot of ripples just like you see right now so let's go back to reasonable value 4700 i could use a crazy amount of value here but i want to use something in the realm of reality um it's been a long time i i bought capacitors so uh, it could you could have 10,000 microfarads but 4700 does it for me so let's let's Try ten thousand, right? Why not? This is free. <laughs> this is free on the, on the simulator, right? It's free, so we can just buy in quotes. 
so this is 10,000 microfarads and you can see it's almost pure uh, DC it's, it's, it's pure DC basically so if you want to try this go ahead and do that so the higher the value of your capacitor the longer it takes to charge and discharge it remember your Q is equal to IT the charge is equal to current time, time times time so the current multiplied by the time is a, a charge you're pumping into it and um, uh, remember that the capacitor the capacitance of a ca capacitor is constant of proportionality between the quantity of charge Q and the potential difference V so the the your capacitance then is um, Q is equal to uh, sorry the C is equal to Q over V and Q is IT so C IT is equal to your um, V is equal to so um, let's go through that again so the C is equal to Q over V the constant of proportionality between the quantity of charge Q and the potential difference V when you cross and multiply V is equal to then Q over C and Q is IT IT over C is your V so the voltage you're pumping in multiply by the time and the and the and the current right will give you the charge the, the capacitance so in this case you have a very high capacitance and you have the current is the same we're not changing anything there the voltage is the same so the only thing we're changing is the capacitance right so the higher the capacitance the more time it takes right so the higher the capacitance, the more time it takes to charge it. Alright. So that's it for now. Alright. So if you do that correlation, um, I'm just going to zoom this out. So I want you to internalize this formula. It's it's not really um, that complex, but I just want to make sure that it's communicated properly. So when you have C is equal to Q over V and Q is I T, so the the I and T are in the numerator of the V. If the V is constant, then for you to get a higher C, it to, to charge higher C you need to have more I and more T it's just or more current or more time or more of both right so when the voltage is constant in this case it is the only thing changing is our C so the higher the C to get higher C from the same V in the denominator then your I has to change but I is not changing in our case so the only thing that changes is the T so you get a higher T to charge it takes higher time to charge and discharge the capacitor right that's why you see this almost like a straight line now when we lower the value just one more time let's lower it by 10 each one by 10 when you lower it by 10 okay it doesn't make much change let's lower it oh no this is let's make it uh, we have 10,000 so let's make it uh, 1,000 microfarads As soon as you're making a 1000 microfarads, you're noticing the difference right away. And the lesser you go, the um, so it takes less time this time to charge that. And remember, it takes time for the for the sinusoidal waves to go to complete cycle. So then it's coming down before you start charging again. So, anyways, I think this is awesome uh, simulator. So I'm going to end it here for Transformers. If you have any questions, please post your, your questions and comments. We're going to uh, see how we can help. Um, try other forms of, rectif of uh, rectifiers. Full wave, uh, uh, half wave, doublers, quadruplers, and so on and so forth. T pick up any architecture you like and just try it here. Right? All right. Thank you. And when you do this, remember to put a load at the output. Otherwise, the value will be... Um, might not be the actual value on the output right so it open circuit voltage is almost like infinity it will just give any value
so you need to connect a load on it all right um i'm gonna end this here on so we didn't put a title to this so why don't we put a title to it? this is our transformer for watching this we're gonna save this for another day and save.